I mean, just seriously, God, like I, that song, if it had not been with the Lord on my side, where would I be? Like that is my academic journey. Like God had his hands on me. Um, and I'm just so grateful for um, his presence in my life. And, you know, I know if I wouldn't have had faith and he wouldn't have literally kind of nudged me in the right directions and helped me through um, a, lot of the, a lot of the different obstacles that I went through, I wouldn't be where I'm at as well. So. Hey, hey, everybody. This is Dr. Patrice Buckner Jackson, and this is the Love Always PBJ podcast. You can call me PBJ. And this podcast is dedicated to three things. One, an identity that is securely rooted in Christ. Two, purpose that flows from a heart to serve. And three, relationships that are worth the cost. This is my letter of love to millennials. And our goal here is to encourage you in your identity, in your purpose, and in your relationships. Listen, friends, if you have not followed me on Instagram yet, how many times do I have to say it? You need to follow me on Instagram at Dr. Patrice Buckner Jackson. How else are you going to get your spoon full of PBJ every Monday? You got to go to Instagram to get that. And you also get a new episode of the Love Always PBJ podcast every Wednesday. We are here to motivate. We are here to inspire. And we are here to set you on fire concerning your purpose. And tonight, today, whenever you're listening or watching this, I got friends to help me out. I am so excited. I've been asking questions of many of you about what are those obstacles that stand in your way of getting your goals done and what goals are you trying to get done? So we had an episode about building your business from your passion. Tonight, we are talking about education. If you've ever heard me tell my story, you know that education has made all the difference for me. It has been the tool that has literally changed my life and generations to come after me. So I believe in the power of education. I also believe that there are many of you out there who are considering if you should pursue another degree, you are thinking about if you should go get a degree, it's been on your heart for a long time and for whatever reason, you have not taken that step. So tonight I have asked my friends to share with you their journeys through education and through obtaining their degrees. And some of us are still working through some of those degrees. We're going to give you the real tonight because our goal is to let you know if we can do it, you can do it too. So here we go. I'm going to ask my friends to introduce themselves. If you would tell the people who you are. This here. Um, my name is Caleb Rogers. A little bit about me and my background. I uh, work in higher education. I help get students uh, connected with educational opportunities. Uh, and so I graduated with my bachelor's in public relations from Georgia Southern University uh, back in 2015. And then basically immediately after, uh, finished my master's of education in higher ed administration, also from Georgia Southern uh, and then right now I'm getting ready to finish up my coursework for my PhD in educational policy studies at Georgia State University, uh, getting ready to start the hard part, look at the research and everything like that. But that's a little bit about me and my background and what got me here. Hey, uh, my name is Lindsay Williams Mayweather. Um, I work in higher education and I like to say that I'm kind of like the buffet table for students when they start at university, getting them everything that they need to know for a successful start. Um, I did my undergraduate work at Clemson University. I have a degree in psychology with a minor in health science. Um, and then I went on to Florida State University for my master's in higher education with an emphasis in student affairs. I also have a certificate in institutional research. Um, and I'm currently working on my doctorate at the University of Georgia, studying learning leadership and organizational development. I'm a doctoral candidate working on my dissertation, and I am looking at um, developing expertise and engagement among new employees. Hi, I'm Dylan John, and um, I'm in industry as uh, in construction project management. Uh, I started my, <clears throat> my collegiate journey at Middle Georgia College, uh, when it was Middle Georgia College, and then of course now Middle Georgia State University. I uh, was there during that transition. Uh, that's where I started off, so a community college. 
Uh, then I transferred to Georgia Southern University to do my bachelor's uh, in construction management, uh, finished off my bachelor's there, then got a wonderful opportunity to continue my continue on to do my master's. Uh, so I did my master's of uh, science and applied engineering also at Georgia Southern. Uh, and now I'm in industry. I'm stuck in industry. So I can't seem to get out of industry back into school. But, you know, I, I, I like where I'm at. So uh, that's that's a little bit about me. Hello, everyone. My name is Ja'Kayla Andrews. Um, I am a registered nurse. I graduated from Georgia Southern University. Um, I got my bachelor's degree um, in biology at that time, went on and completed my master's degree in nursing at Augusta University where I completed this clinical nurse leader program. Um, we are entry level nurses at this point um, when, we, when we do graduate, but we um, have a master's level of nursing. Um, I, plan on taking that even further and becoming a women's health nurse practitioner. Um, I work now as a labor, labor and delivery nurse um, slash postpartum care nurse. So I am planning on furthering my education and taking care of more mo mothers inside of the clinical setting. Hey everyone and Dr. Jackson, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to be a part of your platform. Um, my name is Dr. Gary Green. Um, I work in multicultural student engagement in, in higher education um, at an institution in the in Georgia, and um, my job is to educate students on the importance of cultural competency and also advocate to advocate for um, those that are underserved and marginalized um, in higher education as well. Um, I graduated with my bachelor's degree in communications um, from Georgia Southern, stayed there as well, and got my master's degree in higher education. Um, and I graduated in 2019 with my doctoral degree in educational innovation. And I don't know if I've told you all, so I have a Bachelor of Science in Sociology from the College of Charleston. Um, I have a Master's in Counseling from Webster University and a Doctor um, of Education um, from Georgia Southern University. So with all of those beautiful introductions and all of those degrees, there may be people out here saying, okay, I'm logging off now because I can't do anything with that. That sounds way too fancy. It sounds way too hard. Um, and I just, you're confirming that education is not for me. Let's dig a little deeper. Let's talk about where we came from. And Dylan, I'm going to call on you because I know your story. Um, so can you talk to us a little bit about before you got to Middle Georgia? Uh, yeah. Uh, so before I got to Middle Georgia, I never really thought I'd get to get to college or go to university. Um, I was in high school, pretty average student um, for the most part. And then I had a back injury and then I lost my mom. And then I just had all these things kind of tumble down. Sorry if I get a little emotional, but yeah, it, it, it's one, it, it seemed like one thing after the other just kind of beating me down. So College didn't seem to be on the books from everyone else's perspective for me. Uh, so it was it was a challenge to try and kind of tell myself, no, I, I can go to university, I can go to college. Come from a business family in Sri Lanka, everyone, you know, said, well, you have the gift of the gab, you have it all set up, you know, your, your dad's a businessman, you should be able to kind of pick up the pieces there. You will do fantastic in business, don't worry about it, you don't need education. And that really hurt me because it was also a pride thing. And... Um, uh, as a South Asian, uh, yes, you know, Asian moms and dads, uh, they're pretty strict. Uh, I'll, I'll go along with the stereotypes, you know, the expectation of education. Um, and I know it's a global thing, but in South Asia, for some reason, there's this tag along, right? Um, and so that was a little bit of a, a tough pill to swallow that it just felt like I wasn't good enough for education. Um, so got an opportunity to, uh, I did my SATs in two weeks. Um, got a decent score. Uh, I failed my, my high school exams in, in the Sri Lankan context. Uh, but here, you know, thank God for SATs. They're like, oh, you know, your SATs seem possible. And all of a sudden I had a, I had a window of opportunity. So, um, uh, and here I am, uh, you know, nearly 10 years after with a bachelor's and a master's degree, never, ever, ever, ever thought that, uh, that I'd even get into a university start with. So, so that's a little bit of my story. So yeah, it was a, it was a journey. So for me, um, young girl, grew up in the country um, of Georgia, um, Georgia near Athens. Um, no one really talked about college um, around me. No one even 
I I don't remember seeing having like mentors or um, people that I thought that I wanted to be like from my hometown um, that went to college. So it was something that I just um, was blessed to have been accepted into a program called the Greensboro Dreamers. Um, this two group of people, three people that mentored us all the way up until high school. And um, because we, we had a requirement that we kept our grades up and we attended every um, after school event that they had for us, which was complicated, um, but we did it. <laughs> um, and because of the, the, they really are my angels um, because of them showing me that college was out there. I, I don't remember knowing ever knowing that there was a such thing as college before them um and visiting colleges and visiting and getting to know college students as my mentors um really sparked the interest for for me I don't think that I pursued higher education because I thought that I was going to be somebody I pursued higher education at that point as a 18 year old girl from Greensboro Georgia because it was getting away from Greensboro Georgia mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um and from then on, I feel like God had a plan for me and it, it everything just started from there. It went from there. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're a registered nurse now I'm a registered from nurse. Greensboro, <laughs> Georgia. That's right. That's right. Y'all tell me why. Why did you decide to pursue even your first degree? For those of you who are still pursuing, why did you continue? For my first one, it was my mom. Uh, I remember when I was in high school. I wasn't the best student for sure. Um, I was really just focused on sports and lifting and like worrying about what I'm going to eat after we got out of school. Um, and I remember one day joking around with my mom because I don't know, I, I got in trouble or something with a teacher or something. And I like, told my mom, I was like, I really, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't really want to do the school thing. I want to do tech prep. I was in college prep and I said, I want to go down to tech prep. And she was like, no, it's like not even an option. Like you, you, you can't do that. Um, and, you know, as I really reflect on that, my mom was such a, a driving force in really like me and holding me accountable and really making me see that there were, you know, aspirations and, and goals that I didn't even know existed that, you know, really without her presence, I really wouldn't have been exposed to. So from her just really staying on me and letting me know that, hey, you don't know exactly what you want to do, because at the time, like I said, I was really into sports, like football was my life. Um, and for her really pushing me to let me know that, hey, you know, you're going to want to do something after you graduate from college. What is that going to be? And her experience from graduating um, from Clark Atlanta um, and for her experience from being a full time professional and, and really just understanding the benefits of a degree. She really kind of I want to say she forced me at that time period <laughs> to take advantage of everything that education had to offer. So in high school, uh, I never missed a day of class. I may not have had the best grades. But I had perfect attendance. <laughs> yeah. That's my mom. Um, she made sure that I was in school every day. Um, and even though I may not have wanted to take the SAT, like she made sure that I signed up and took it. And, you know, if it wasn't for, like I said, her persistence and really investment in me, I wouldn't be where I'm at today for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That push, that advocate, that support. I love it. Yeah, definitely family um, for me. Uh, small Dylan, my family is from the Eastman and Cochrane area. Um, so like I spent all of my summers in Eastman. Um, my aunt is actually, well, she just retired off of the custodial staff at Middle Georgia. Um, so like growing up, my aunt would always joke with me, like, just come move in with me when you finish high school and you could just go to Middle Georgia. And I was like, auntie, I, I do not want to move to Eastman full time. Like, I love it, but not that much. Um, and my mom always worked at colleges. I actually grew up in Charleston though. Um, so my mom always worked at colleges and I would like file paperwork for her, like if I was out of school or whatnot. So it was really just always a part of family life and an expectation um, that like my aunts and my mom set for me. Um, and I remember my mom like working on her master's when I think I was in middle school, like end of middle school, going to high school, my mom was working on her master's degree. Um, and that's where she stopped. And so she was kind of like, well, you like got to do more than I did. Um, so that push to want to pursue the doctorate degree was really like, okay, look, how can I honor my mom and all the sacrifices that she made for me um, to keep 
pushing forward. You know, Lindsay, I appreciate you bringing up that example that your mom showed to you. Um, You know, when I talk about my doctorate, I always full disclosure, tell my testimony. It took me seven years to get my doctorate. It's a four year program. And it took me seven years, not because I was grinding and pushing for seven years. It's because three of those years I was running from it. When I got to that dissertation phase where you have to write five chapters and do research, I had convinced myself that I wasn't a good writer. I had told myself for years that I wasn't a good writer. So I was paralyzed. I could not. I lost my faculty chair because I took so long. I was at the point that I would have been asked to leave the program if I had not done something. The reason why I bring that up is because one of the main motivating factors was my daughter watching me. I was not willing to allow her to see me quit. I was not going to be her excuse that anytime something is hard, you have permission to give up. So when that hit me, that she was watching me not write, she was watching me slowly make that decision that I was just going to let it go. It wasn't worth it to me anymore, which wasn't true, but that's what I was telling myself. That's what turned it around for me and said, no, you got to do this, not just for you, but you, you cannot give her, um, the idea that it's okay to give up every time something's hard. So that example is so, so, so important. Caleb, why? Why did you pursue and why are you continuing to pursue education? Yeah, I think starting off at the beginning, uh, college wasn't an option for me. Uh, The conversation was actually more so what I was going to major in. I knew I was going to college. I knew I had to it was more so, am I going to listen to mom and and be an educator or am I going to listen to dad and get a a music degree? Um, Jokes on them, I ended up with public relations. And and my experience in undergrad, though, um, I noticed that there were stories like these from from my peers and from my friends, and not everyone had the encouragement, not everyone had the support. Um, And even when, when people decided they wanted to go to school, they didn't always have the same resources, the same privileges, those kind of things that I had that made my transition easy. Um, And so I think that's why I continued. I I saw that there were things that needed to be addressed, things that needed to be fixed. And I felt like getting to watch my friends or or more so having to watch my friends go through those kind of things pushed me to keep going. And and I got a passion and I had stuff that I wanted to achieve, but I knew that I couldn't do it without um, kind of arming myself with the tools, with the words, with the experiences and stories and things like that. Um, so I knew I had to keep going. I knew I couldn't accomplish what I wanted to accomplish just on my own with my own experiences. Um, so, so unfortunately I had to keep going, but I've loved every second of it. And and every time I've, I've hit one milestone, I've decided I wasn't quite done and needed a little bit more. Um, so I've continued to find that inspiration and that why through every step of the process. Y'all talk to me about, is it worth it? There's a lot of conversation about, is it worth getting a degree? Is it worth going through higher education? And and I get it. It's expensive. It takes time. It takes a lot of effort. Was it worth it for you? Is it worth it? For, for me, I had, I think, looking at a lot of my American peers, uh, I had the blessing of my father really supporting me through college. Uh, so it's sometimes very easy to take it for granted. Uh, But also at the same time, my father did a very good job at constantly reminding me about what this investment was. Uh, And really and truly sometimes, and the reason I say this way is a different perspective from many who actually kind of have to work for it. My my father worked extremely hard to make sure that I didn't have to do the extra jobs or anything like that to stay in school, which I know a lot of my friends had to do. Um, and in fact, I had one of my friends sat, sat with me one night and he said, um, he, with tears in his eyes, when he kind of heard what my setup was, he said, man, you don't understand. I'd kill for what you have in terms of making sure that you get to school. And it was those experiences and those human moments that I shared with my friends uh, that really showed me, yeah, no, this is a big investment. And, um, and then I'm talking about being in the moment and in that in that situation, when you come out the tunnel, yeah, you know, it's worth it. You've, you've accomplished it. You've, you've achieved it. It's something that you have. Um, and nobody can take that education away from you, right? But when you're in it, sometimes it's kind of easy to be like, oh, you know, I really don't want to push through. I can't push through. I have other options. 
Um, so so my, my, my father did a very good job of reminding me about the value. And I think having those interactions with my friends really helped solidify, oh, you know, this is a big deal. So, so yeah, it, it, it's, it's been a great value. For me, um, just as you both stated, you, um, you and Lindsay stated for representation, um, for little girls that look like me or uh, little girls that grew up like I grew up, it's very important for me to, um, and it's, it's worth it um, for us to pursue higher education because one word that always sticks with me when I think about my story, when I think about my husband's story, when I think about um, our lifestyle is trailblazers. And I think it's so important because we, we need more trailblazers. We need people to go through the things that it, it takes to go through, get to where we, we have become. And so for my family, I am that representation for my family. Um, I am the one who was able to get out and and pursue higher education. Now my sister is pursuing higher education. Now my brother is pursuing higher education. And it's amazing. And, and we were we were told this when we were we were young that we all would be where we are now um, from a minister. And it's amazing how God has shown himself to be true. Mm -hmm. um, but be just being that I, I can't I I I think it's worth it because it's worth allowing God to use you to become a trailblazer. And it's so important. It's so important for young girls like myself that come from a small country town um, where no one ever hardly makes it. Um, but now so many people that can say, not just me, not, not just Ja'Kayla, the registered nurse, there's many others from my hometown now that are pursuing and have pursued higher education. And we're all, and, and there's so many that's, that's just like me that's reaching back out to those people. So being a trailblazer to me is very important. Um, yeah. So it's worth it. It's definitely Absolutely. I was going to say, I, I can definitely uh, be a complainer and I love to call <laughs> my mom and try to complain uh, about school. Um, and she like won't let me because she's always saying it's going to be so worth it in the end once you finish. Um, so I'm choosing to believe that this doctorate degree is going to be worth it once I finish. Um, yeah. So I think it's gonna be worth it. But even like my undergraduate and my master's degree, I would say I've definitely opened up doors. Like I've had the opportunity to live in places across the US that I never would have imagined um, living. So I mean, it's definitely opened up opportunities and um, grown a network, but it can definitely be uh, trying while you're in it. Yeah. Yeah, I want to, well, first of all, let me just say to you, Lindsay, being on the other side, let me just give it to you now. It is completely worth it. It's completely, it's completely worth it. And not just for the, I have a doctorate degree um, to have doctor on your name, but I, I see, especially those who work in our field in higher education, but in other fields where a doctorate is a standard people who have everything to that point. And then they get to the point where a door is open, but they can't walk through that door because they don't have the key. It creates frustration um, for those folks because otherwise they would be eligible. But because they didn't get that last key, they cannot walk through the door. Um, so it is absolutely worth it. It is absolutely worth it. And being a person of color, being a woman, what I'm not going to do is give anybody an excuse. I'm not going to hand you the reason not to let me in. If you don't let me in, you're going to have to work real hard not to let me in um, because I'm bringing everything that I got. Um, so it is absolutely worth it it is absolutely worth it when you get to the point and that next door opens that requires that key you are going to be so glad you're going to be so glad that you put in all the effort and as Jaquela was talking about being a trailblazer I was thinking about the effort and the work that it takes to be a trailblazer it's beautiful and it's worth it for what it does for other people but it is not easy 
It is not easy. And so many times we want and we desire to do the next thing, to accomplish that goal, but we want it to be easy. <laughs> and, 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 and the thought and the fear of what it's going to cost us to get that done stops us in our tracks and discourages us from actually getting it done. But anything worth having, this is, this is my mantra that I adopted when I was walking through that last year of my doctoral program anything that is going to serve me well for the rest of my life is worth temporary sacrifice. And that's what it is. It's temporary sacrifice. If you're going to live the next year, the next two years, the next three years, the next four years, if you're going to be living, breathing anyway, why not find yourself on the other side with something in your pocket that's going to serve you for the rest of your life? So again, I'll, I'll share that anything that is going to serve you well for the rest of your life is worth temporary sacrifice. Sacrifice, yes, but does it last forever? No, no. So it is, I would say, I would say it's worth it. I got to encourage you, sister. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Y'all, how do you get it done? How do you get it done? So I know that you have families. Um, I know that Jaquela, you you had your son you, when you were in undergrad. Your and then your marriage and everything and jobs and because I know Lindsay and Dr. Green, y'all are working full time and Caleb working full time and getting doctorates. Who sometimes I know you wonder what about your life choices, but. <laughs> How do you get it done? Let's give some practical, real life. This is how I make it work in my life. Y'all help somebody. For me, that's how it looks right there. <laughs> um, having him on my side. Um, there were times, I, even going back to when I was pregnant with him, I remember um, walking across Georgia Southern's hot, hot, hot summer campus. Um, nine months pregnant, still trekking to environmental science. <laughs> um, but he, he, I mean, he made it worth it though. Um, and for him, even being in nursing school, he would stay up with me wee hours of the night, right by my side. Um, he's, he's been with me every step of the way, but I, I, it, it's been hard. It's been tough. Um, it was hard to watch him stay up in the middle of the night knowing he was only three years old up at 11 o'clock. I really wish he was in the bed, but I also couldn't drag him away from me because that also brought mommy guilt um, mm -hmm. of him having to go to bed without me. Um, so it's, it, it definitely was tough to have a son um, and, and being in school. But it also brought a reward and because it pushed me and it helped me to know that I had a little one that was going to be tapping on my shoulders every single night that I was up studying, that I was up praying, that I mean, sometimes he would even pray with me, um, mm -hmm. that I was up crying sometimes, um, but he was there. And so that's, that's, that's my story with him. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, it was uh, kind of, and it, it's still something I'm learning, but learning to say no to things so I can uh, focus on the things that I have to do and the things that I want to do. Um, I love to travel and I have like a very good group of travel friends um, who have been going on all the greatest trips, well, before COVID, of course, um, that I would have loved to have gone on, but couldn't because there's no way that I was going to um, be able to get my work that pays the bills done and my schoolwork done, um, but being able to prioritize. So like maybe there was one or two trips that I could go on. Um, like for instance, my birthday was uh, back in September and I uh, also needed to turn in um, my prospectus and it's like, okay, that was the goal, like turn this in so I can go on this trip and enjoy. Um, so I like to set like little, I guess, treats for myself but that learning to say no has uh, been helpful to get all the things done and I guess just giving myself grace to like if I don't get something done there's always tomorrow so yeah but, that's yeah. real that's real help us out Dr. Green how'd you do it one day at a time uh, that, that was my motto for the most part one day at a time one assignment at a time one class at a time um, and then you know just before I knew it, 
in the grace of God, I was able to get to the end. And I felt like that from <laughs> I felt like every degree from my diploma from high school to undergrad masters, I feel like uh, that, that was kind of the mindset that I kind of took at it, just really focusing on the next assignment or the next journey at hand and doing the best I can to, to really tackle it um, in the best way possible and, and trying not to overthink and overstress, which I think is, is something that um, we do a lot in academia. We'll focus so much on it being extremely perfect or, you know, uh, you know everything being as great or as awesome as you like, but you know, not every assignment or everything you turn in is, is going to, to reflect that, whether it's in a grade or, or, or whatever form of evaluation and, and being okay with that. Um, I'm one of those people that I don't take it into heart as, as some, but I, I still do definitely internalize criticism. And, and sometimes if I don't get the best grades. Um, so that was something that I had to, to overcome was just understanding that, you know, hey, sometimes it's okay if you make a B, you know, that's fine. Or if you get a C. Um, you, know, as, you know, sometimes passing, especially you know, when you get to graduate school, you know, that, that's really all you need to get to the next level. Um, other thing I wanted to, to make sure I, I talked about was like having a strong community. So like not only a part of your academic program, but also outside of that. So whether you're in a doctoral program and you have a close relationship with members of your cohort or your faculty members, um, or it's your friends. I know for sure for every level of schooling I've been through, I've had two or three friends that have literally supported me so much through the academic journey. Um, and if it wasn't for them, I know I wouldn't be where I am today. Whether that's, you know, them working on assignment and then me seeing them working on assignment and knowing like, dang, I probably should be doing something too. Um, or it's, you know, them, you know, coming back and talking about uh, an awesome accomplishment. You know, the fact that you know, iron sharpens iron, that was such a strong motivational uh, factor in me continuing to pursue um, the, the, you know, completing my degrees. And then also, I mean, just seriously, God, like I, that song, if it had not been with the Lord on my side, where would I be? Like, that is my academic journey. Like God had his hands on me. Um, and I'm just so grateful for, um, his presence in my life. And, you know, I know if I wouldn't have had faith and he wouldn't have literally kind of nudged me in the right directions and helped me through um, a lot of the, a lot of the different obstacles that I went through, I wouldn't be where I'm at as well. So, those are the, 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 brief, the three you know, big things I wanted to highlight right there. I'll go ahead. Um, you know, Lindsay and, and Garrett both said a couple of things that I found myself implementing in this journey. Um, I'm a calendar person. And so I would schedule out my work day and then I'd schedule out my evenings. And I would, I would say, you know, Tuesday night we're working on this project, but uh, kind of like Lindsay hinted at, you got to also reward yourself and still allow yourself to be a human and, and to be a friend and to be a family member and those kind of things. And um, I think that, that that was something I didn't do early on. And I struggled because I didn't allow myself um, to still be myself. And, and doing that, you get so bogged down and you lose your purpose and you lose um, what it is that you're, that you're fighting for. Um, and so allowing yourself to be human and, and like Garrett said, allowing yourself to make mistakes. Um, I have one of my um, committee members and one of my faculty members, she and I do this exercise every time we meet and every time we have a class together uh, where I have to, to make these allowances to myself. I have to allow myself to not know something. I have to allow myself to be wrong. Mm -hmm. And I have to allow myself to learn something, um, the smallest thing from whatever it is. And so giving yourself those kind of goals, um, one small thing that she said that I, I, I use in everything now um, when you read an article, when you when you work on an exam or an essay or, or when you write, uh, you don't have to learn everything the author wants you to learn. You don't have to write everything that you want to contribute to the world in this one paper. Um, if you can understand or learn one concept, if you can get one point across, um, that's a success and that's a success to celebrate. Uh, but that's also a success to really motivate you and, and move forward. So really breaking it down like that and being um, intentional with what you're learning and why, uh, but also really intentional with balancing that time. It's important. Absolutely. I, I remember my faculty members always told us that a done dissertation is a good dissertation. <laughs> we would all struggle with trying to get it right and trying to get it done. Like, listen, hey, 
pull it together. You just need to get this done. Check. You're not trying to answer all the questions. Leave something for somebody else to answer. You just need to answer this one question. What I would offer also, what I learned is whatever works for you in the rest of your life will work for education as well. Um, so when I was in the phase that I was getting ready um, to write my dissertation, um, everybody had advice. And I was asking everybody who was a doctor, how'd you do it? How'd you do it? How'd you do it? And everybody had a different method. You know, some people said, oh, I wake up early in the morning and I write for one hour a day. And I tried that and I would sit there for an hour and stare at the computer and get nothing done. You know, and then other people would say, oh, I just took a retreat for a whole week uh, away from everything. And I just wrote all week so I went to Callaway Gardens for a week and I stayed for a whole week and I sat on the porch and washed the water I got nothing done I got nothing done and then at some point it just clicked the way that I got through undergrad the way that I got through my master's the way that I got through high school for me late at night in middle of the night all night when everybody is sleeping and nobody else is calling my name and I have hours to work, I have a span of time, I can crank it out. I can get it done. And of course, I don't do that every night because you need to rest. You got to take care of your body. But for me, it was come home from work, do whatever you need to do for home, get a quick nap, wake up at midnight and hit it until 6 a.m. I would do it and I would get so much done. Not saying that to tell somebody else to do it, but that was my secret. That's how I did all of my papers in my master's degree. That's, that's how I got it done. Even now, if I have a project for work, that's a major project. If I give myself that night to do it, I can get it done. But that's what works for me. Whatever works for you in your life, when you have something big to do, your most productive time, that's how you get your schoolwork done. It, 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 there's no secret to it. Whatever works for you, just keep that up. Just keep doing it. What about fear and doubt and imposter syndrome and all the stuff up here that stops us from accomplishing our goals? Did you all experience any of that? Do you experience it? And how do you get through it? I'll jump in if no one else is right now. Um, I, I have this podcast that I listen to weekly. And this wise philosopher on this podcast a few weeks ago said, you got to do it before you feel it. And I wish that I had heard that years ago um, because the fear is real. And a lot of that comes from that imposter syndrome. Um, I'm in a program with, with mostly people that are full-time students. They are TAs and they are RAs and they're doing all of these things. They're publishing, some of them are, are, are publishing their fourth or fifth articles at this point. And I'm, I'm lucky to log into a synchronous class on time. And, and so I watch some of these students and I watch my friends in the program. And I just think I should not be here. And, and by the grace of God, I'm coasting along. Um, but I also, um, I think back again to that purpose and, and why I'm doing what I'm doing. And the goals that I have for equitable policy and education and those kind of things, you know, um, Galatians six two says, "Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ." Yeah. And, and so, for me, I have to remind myself that this is this is part of me fulfilling the law of Christ. This is what I'm called to do. Um, and, and so, if I allow that fear to overtake me, um, you know, uh, another thing that you said a few weeks ago is, "How can we?" glorify God for this work that he's done if we omit what he's doing in us. And so I have to remind myself that this is not, um, this isn't my choice to stop out. This isn't my choice to stop what I'm doing because it's not my work that I'm, that I'm doing. And it's not, um, it's not for me. And so it's real and it's out there, but you just gotta, you gotta talk it out, like you said, um, and, and just go with it before you allow that fear to overtake you. Cause there are so many excuses not to do it. And you can convince yourself uh, if you take too long, for sure. Oh, Caleb, that's so good. I, I love that you just said, this is not my work to do. This is not my, this is not my goal that I'm accomplishing. Yes, these are our personal goals, but God put, God puts purpose in all of us. And, but he also makes provisions for that purpose. So not just the cost of it, right? The money of it, but he gives you what you need inside to get it done. 
oftentimes the biggest hurdle is the are the hurdles here. If we can get over the hurdles here, we already have everything that we need to accomplish whatever the goal is. That's what kind of God he is. He's not going to call you to do something and not make a way for you to do it. He is not going to call you to do something that he hasn't already equipped already already and your bible talks about him equipping us literally knit inside of our mother's womb so we're not waiting to accomplish or to receive some special characteristics we're not just waiting in life to be special or to have enough or to be enough you were created enough you were created enough you know one of my favorite worship songs there's a part in it that says mighty are the works of your hands and when we think about that and all the things that God created is like wow that is true but hold up didn't he create you too all everything that we see ma majesty in everything that we see beauty in everything that we see power in he created but sometimes we forget he created me too so if he can do that powerful work in all the things I see and all the people I see, I've also got to give credit for what he's doing in me. And it's not about pride. It's not about who I am in and of myself. It's an acknowledgement that I was created by a powerful God that leaves nothing out. He leaves no stone unturned. And he wrote a story and a plan for me from A to Z. And he took care of everything that needs to be taken care of along the way. So then it turns into more of a faith journey. It turns into more of how much do I trust him? And am I going to obey him? Right? I love that. Thank you, Caleb. I love that. Absolutely. It's his work. It's his work, not, not ours. So for me, uh, you know, come coming from the background I came into college, like I, I felt this extreme pressure and burden to, to excel at everything. Uh, it was like, you know, uh, since everyone had this perception of me, oh, Dylan can't, Dylan can't excel in academia. Uh, I wanted to excel in academia and then some. Uh, so, you know, Lindsay was saying that, you know, had to learn to say no. I was struggling at that because I was a yes man for everything. I want to be involved in everything. I want to excel in everything. Um, so it really did come down to prioritizing. And I actually remember uh, there was one spring break. It was my first spring break at Georgia Southern. I didn't go anywhere. I just sat down in my room and I came up with the priority list. Uh, these are what, Dil this is what makes Dylan tick pretty much, like six things. Uh, and those six things were kind of the, the foundation blocks for anything and everything I did. Um, and that really helped me. And the funny thing is, as soon as I got my job, uh, I, I actually called it the focus six. And I had like the six blocks that I kind of built out. Um, and when I went to my job the first month, I actually focused on building on that. So I actually now have a priority pyramid. Um, and I shared it with one of my mentors. And one of my mentors said, well, man, you know, if you have this priority pyramid, then you kind of know uh whether you're whether you're happy or whether you're moving in the direction you need to because now you know who you are mm -hmm. um so trying to kind of spend some time and really reflect on who i am and what makes me tick really helped me figure out how to get things done so to speak because it allowed me to say no to the things that i really need not be involved in uh it allowed me to prioritize relationships my focus and a lot of things um but leading into the fear aspect i mean I was afraid right through. I mean, my first semester, I didn't know what a GPA was. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm coming from a completely different system. I don't understand uh, what this system was. Sophia was like driving everything. Uh, you know, what if I fail here too? You know, suddenly a door opened and now what if I fail here? So that was a challenge. Um, but go going to what you were talking and I think Caleb touched on about, uh, you know, about having faith. Um, I learned that it's important to trust God, but trust people and trust the process. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you want to you want to be controllers of the outcome and you want to control the process. I think you all have a word for it. It's called micromanagement or something. I never was a micromanager. Uh, but, you know, uh, with life, you become so indulgent, like micromanaging that you forget to trust the trust the process and trust the people. Um, it's okay to kind of lay back. I, I mean, especially in education, that's the whole point. You're learning. 
so learn to fail and learn to kind of pick back up. Um, so I learned to trust people and I learned to trust process. You know very well there wasn't someone who could forward an email as fast as Dylan could um, when when it came to when it came to trying to allocate responsibilities or whatever I was involved in. Uh, that's because I learned to trust people. Um, years before that, I would not trust people, so I would want to do it myself. Um, so yeah, a l- little bit of both. Sorry, I kind of expanded on. No, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's so good. And I appreciate you bringing up that fear of what if I fail here too, because we do need to speak to somebody who has had a failure or who hasn't done well. Maybe you didn't do well in high school, or maybe you weren't at the top of your class and you're assuming that education is not for you because, you know, you haven't succeeded in one way or the other, or in your eyes, you haven't succeeded. But I'm here to tell you that what happened yesterday doesn't have to happen tomorrow. Um, A few episodes back, I spoke to my dad and he talked about how he went to the Citadel, failed out there. Then he went to Morehouse and majored in Spelman and failed out out there you know and then he dropped out of school and he went to the army and now he's colonel retired dr frederick um so it, it whatever happened yesterday doesn't have to determine tomorrow you are the only person who can decide that you are the only person who can say this is what my tomorrow is going to look like because this is what i'm going to do about it we got to do something we got to take a step we've got to make a turn in order for that to be different we can't wait we can't sulk we can't sit in it yes it happened acknowledge it learn from it but it doesn't have to repeat itself it doesn't have to happen again right yeah I was gonna say my fear I feel like really was a result out of like this idea of not wanting to like disappoint like family is uh means so much and wanting to you know do everything for them but I was like so afraid uh to the point where like I didn't tell anybody that I had gotten into a doctoral program like (laughs) I told my mom but that was it. Like I didn't post on social media and I like to post. I post anything. My family does like a little, um, at the end, like at our family reunion in August, like we recognize like all the kids or like accomplishments for the year. I was like, ma, don't put it in the, the, like, we don't need to tell anybody, but of course she put it in there anyways. And I was hot. Like when they called my name, I was like, ma, we talked about this. We're not telling nobody till I finish. Like, what happens if I don't finish? And she's like, why would you even say that? Like, you're being selfish right now by like not talking about this. And so this is, your platform is probably actually like the most that I've talked (laughs) about this degree uh, for anybody. So this is my effort of of not being selfish and sharing what Guy has been doing for me um, in in this educational journey. Oh my gosh, I love that. I just got chills all over, Lindsay. I love it. I love it that you are brave enough and want at that point you want to share and you're doing like you're doing the doggone thing. You are doing it. Um, and you that don't know Lindsay, she's a rock star, literally like killing it at work and also doing this degree and stuff outside, like regionally and nationally in organizations and things. She's a leader. It's who she is. So it's amazing that somebody who has reached all those heights still struggle with the fear of disappointing people. That And it's real. That's real. So all of those thoughts, all those fears, all those, those concerns that you all who are listening and watching us, who you may be experiencing, we want to acknowledge to you today that it is absolutely real. And you've got to learn to do it anyway. It doesn't go away until it's done. You cannot make decisions based on how you feel because your feelings will change with the wind. Never make decisions based on how you feel. Make decisions based on what you know. And Dr. Jackson, I just want to chime Please. in on that real quick. First off, Lindsay does love to post on it. This is a lot for her. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew I knew there was going to be a dig at some point. <laughs> but, now you got to tell my life like this. Like, nobody asked you all of that. <laughs> but I, I was just like Lindsay too. Um, as a matter of fact, I remember talking to, uh, to Dominique 
um, about it a good bit. Like he, he'd asked me, he's like, man, you really haven't ever said anything about you being in school. And I was like, yeah. It was, and it was literally for the exact reason that Lindsay said, in case I failed, I didn't want anybody to know. So like, I remember matter of fact, like when I graduated, I had a few people reach out to me and say, damn, like you were in school? Like <laughs> they didn't even know that I had been working on a, a doctoral degree because I was so worried about, you know, people finding out that I didn't finish um, and the, like, you know, whatever will go along with that. So I, I, it's definitely not worth it. Um, I, I think that fear, it, it can it can hold you back. You know, I probably missed out on having conversations with people that probably could have been more supportive and encouraging me throughout the process. And I think it, it really was really just based in the fact that, you know, from my high school experience, you know, I, I always kind of had fear based off of, you know, me being able to truly excel academically. Even though I'd already got an undergrad and a master's, I still was worried if my writing was good enough, would I be a good enough researcher? Like, how am I going to get through this quant class? Like all those things, even though I was still passing and getting by, like I was doing well, like it, that fear was still there. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really just grateful due to God, like I said, that I'm able to, to, to be at the end. Um, but it was definitely there and it definitely tremendously impacted me. And I just wanted to tell anybody that's kind of going through that, the importance behind finding a network in a mm -hmm. system and, and like Caleb and everybody said, you know, like you, you, you are where you're supposed to be. God put you in that program for a reason. And it's really, you know, it's time for you to show your faith and do everything you need to do to, to, to execute that, to get all the way through. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about cost, y'all. We got to talk about money um, and your own journey, but also I know several of you work in higher education. So what are some of those resources that people can tap into um, to get their education paid for? Because a lot of people just don't have it like that laid aside waiting to pay the tuition. How do people do it? Yeah, I'm a big proponent of trying to find a free education or um, a very cheap but still worthwhile education. Um, so if that is through, when I was doing um, my undergraduate degree, I was fortunate enough to get academic scholarships. So um, I didn't leave uh, undergrad with really any, any debt. Um, and then for my master's degree, I was able to uh, be a graduate assistant that uh, covered my tuition. Now I made some poor decisions uh, outside of my tuition being covered, trying to like live a lavish lifestyle in grad school um, and walked away from grad school with a little over $30,000 in debt um, just because I was making bad decisions with my money, um, but my school was paid for. Um, and at this point, my doctorate degree is paid for um, from work, um, so that tuition assistance. So I think if you can find yourself in a either a job that's willing to um, cover all of your tuition, a portion of your tuition, um, or if you're in a situation where you're able to go to school full time and take on a graduate assistantship or research assistantship, um, I believe there's like no reason to pay for school 100% out of your pocket. There might be some like little fees here and there that you might need to pay for, um, but definitely take the time to do your research and figure out like, is it worth me quitting my job full time so I can pursue school full time and not walk away with debt? Um, or can I be strategic and find a job somewhere that's going to offset my tuition? When I got my job where I am now, one of the reasons was because I knew that I wanted to go to University of Georgia and I knew that they were going to cover my tuition. So I was like, check and we will make that work. Um, and even times I'm like, man, I, I don't know how long I'm gonna be here. I know I'm gonna be here till I finish this degree. That's for sure, um, for free, because I, I, don't, I don't want to pay uh, for, for any more schooling that I don't have to. Um, and then thinking about things like outside of just um, our higher education too, like there's so many like free opportunities, whether like it's YouTube or um, just like going to seminars in the community. I just think there's so many ways to get education for free. I want to touch on something that Lindsay said. She said, you know, um, a cheap but worthwhile education. I think that the worth of education is what you make it. Um, you know, it's what you put in and it's what you pull out of it. We get so excited about prestige of schools and we have these names and we have these recognized programs. But at the end of the day, uh, it, it's what you make of it. And so I think that when we talk about cost, I've been lucky, kind of like Lindsay talked about this last program, 
um, to go through two degrees being covered by my work, but at the same time, um, it's what I make of it. And so if, if you don't have those opportunities, if you are having to pay out of pocket, if you're having to, to dig in a couch cushion to get those books paid for one semester, um, just because someone went to a certain school or did a certain program doesn't mean you have to. And it doesn't mean that you going to uh, an option that's closer to home or that's more affordable mm -hmm. makes you any less of a scholar or an academic or a professional. And so I think it's huge to remind everyone that it's what you make of it. Um, and if that means driving five minutes down the road to a school that has some evening classes, uh, but that's going to change your life and allow you to change other people's lives, and then that's a, a smaller cost, and it's still just as much worth it as anything else. Absolutely. If if I can add to what what Caleb said, I think um, I think far too often we also look at education as a cost and not as an investment. And if you actually approach it as an investment, you're really going to try and drill down on how you're going to make your investment work for you. Whenever you think about cost, you're always thinking about, oh, how do I pay this off? Or how do I do this? How do I do that? It's just such a cumbersome mindset. So if, if we try to kind of reframe it, I think where, you know, okay, you know, what is the investment of going to college? Uh, then you begin to try and, you know, crunch down on those decisions like, okay, how far do I have to travel? I mean, just like you're budgeting and you're making investments on how much you want to invest in a stock or how much you want to put in your 401k, you're trying to make all your money work for you. Uh, then whatever you are investing, uh, and even if you get all the scholarships in the world or everything is funded, your time, uh, you know, all those things, I think in terms of investment in your education, I think is very important. Because once you start crunching all that, you, you, it, it goes back to that question, then you, are, you will make it work and it will, it will, it will be all worth it. Uh, because if, you, if you've done your, your, your homework kind of foundation to, okay, make this money work, uh, it, it, it really will. I mean, I, I had so many wonderful opportunities to travel with the university, get involved, do so many things, be exposed to perspectives and personalities that I would have never thought or dreamt of being involved in. Or, uh, you know, all those things is because I chose to try and spend a lot more time in being involved with people on campus as opposed to, you know, uh, and then, hey, sometimes you just need to sit down at home and play a video game and that's okay. Not, not, not saying no. Mm -hmm. But also it's about that whole investment thing. Am I investing my time well? Am I investing my money well? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you went back to is it worth it, Dylan, because that's exactly what was on my mind. Um, you know, people always always say, hey, I can start this business or I can go into this field or that field. And why do I need to go through all that time to get a degree and pay all that money? Yes, you can. And nothing against it. Not knocking it at all. What I will say and what I always encourage is why not have both? Because when the economy fails, when things go down, you know who keep their jobs? People with degrees. People um, who have their own businesses often struggle when things get rough um, because it's all on their shoulders. So I am, a, I am a believer in having both. You can have your degree, have your career, and have your business on the side, or have your degree and do your business full time. But if things shift, if things get rocky, you got a key in your hand. And that's what the degree is it is a key in your hand that will open doors for you. Um, so I, I always encourage, why not both? Set yourself up for success. Set your family up for success. Making wise choices, thinking about the future, regardless of how things go, you get that key in your hand and it opens doors when you need those doors open. And I also want to say concerning cost, as Lindsay and everybody has shared, there are opportunities to work off tuition. Students can get jobs on campus and they can work work a graduate assistantship you get paid and your tuition paid so you get a check in your pocket and you get your tuition paid I mean it goes from thousands of dollars to a hundred and something that's big deal if you're not in hedge, ed, higher education you may not know that so many times I've met with students who have struggles you know some of them may not have enough food or some of them literally may not have a place to lay their head all of these different troubles and trials higher education college and universities are set up to help.
There are funds, there are resources, there are outlets that can help students who are struggling with different things. But so often I've seen students get so overwhelmed by their trouble and they make the assumption that there's no answer and there's no help. Literally, if you can bring yourself to open your mouth and ask the question, I bet there's a resource. I cannot tell you how many internal scholarships. So most people think scholarships freshman year, right? Let me apply for scholarships before my freshman year. What most people don't understand is many universities have scholarships for people who are not freshmen. They have internal scholarships for people who are in their second or third year. And and those scholarships don't get applications. So the money just sits there. It's based on your major or it's based on an interest or it's based on a characteristic that you hold. And it's at your college or university. They have foundation accounts that can help students. But oftentimes students don't know about these opportunities because they don't ask. So always ask. The worst they can say is no and you're in the same situation you were in. But if the answer is yes, it can take some stress off of you and it can take some worry off of you so you can really focus on what you're here to do. Go ahead, Lindsay. Can I just add to to that in addition to in addition to schools like your professional organizations um, also offer scholarships? Um, You know, like I said, I'm getting my doctorate degree paid for through work. That's tuition. I mean, books to travel to school is still a, a, a financial obligation. Um, and so I applied for a scholarship through the uh, my professional organization and um, got one. And so I would say apply for all types of uh, scholarships, uh, even if you think like I might not need it. You, you definitely need it. Absolutely. And if you don't know, just ask somebody at a college or, or university. If you don't know where to start, ask someone, hey, where are the scholarships? Where can you help me out? There's an office of financial aid. Somebody there can tell you where to start. Put your name out there, do the application, write the personal statement, get this money so that you can get this education that is going to continue to pay you dividends over and over and over and over again. Y'all, we're getting to the end. I don't want to hold you long, but I will ask, and I'm hoping that each of you will be willing to give a piece of advice one piece of advice for those who are thinking about it, really feeling pressed to do it, really feeling called to take this step and pursue education in one way or another. And I'm, I mean, there may be people who are thinking they need to go get their GED. There may be people who are thinking about an undergraduate degree or a master's or a doctorate or whatever it might be, whatever your level is, we are encouraging you to take the step tonight. So one piece of advice, what would you give to help them through that journey or to encourage them to take the step? I'll go first. Um, I'd say in the importance behind doing your research. Um, so in a variety of different ways, like, you know, you want to do your research to make sure you understand how the program you're going to be doing will impact your life in a variety of different ways. Um, so from the application process um, to you, you know, you being accepted and you understanding the the amount of coursework that you will have to do um, and the impact that'll have on all the different aspects of your life. So whether that's your full-time employee and you're working or you have children or you you help take care of a family member is being mindful of how all of that plays into it. Um, But then also um, like like Dylan was saying, uh, you know, evaluating your return on investment depending on whatever program or major you're looking at going into too. Um, I know sometimes I think about higher education and I joke around with Lindsay with, with this. And, you know, if I would have known <laughs> some things back then, would I still be here? I don't know. But, you know, I'm glad I am. <laughs> but I, I say all that to say that it's really important that you really do your research to understand about like not only what it's like being a, a student in that program, but also the professional um, aspects that go along to it when it comes to you know, how much you get paid and a whole bunch of different things that go along with that, because all of that will drastically impact um, a whole bunch of different aspects of your life while you're applying, while you're a student, and then also as a graduate. I'll say um, one piece of advice that I would give is 
it, go, it goes back to faith, having faith in, in talking with God. Um, one thing that I always tell people about myself and how I got to where I am is that I remember um, being young and, and asking God what he wanted out of me. Um, and the boy has been a ride. And I, I, I've gotten to a point where me and God have to have a face-to-face -face conversation sometimes. But this is what I asked for a long time ago. Um, and so I, I feel like it's really, really important. I, and I, I know everyone may not believe in the same faith that I, that I believe in, but it's so important to reach, um, and, and to reach out and, and to dig within yourself and to find that purpose. Once you find your purpose, it's hard to go back. It's hard to go back away from your purpose. Um, that it, God draws you to your, your, your purpose. It, it follows you. Um, and when life gets tough, when it gets rough, when, when education is too expensive, when classes are hard, when fear takes in, it always comes back down to what is your purpose and what are you striving for? Um, and I, I feel like God, God will get you there. He'll take you there. Um, and so once you tap into what it is that you like, um, what it is that your purpose on earth is and what God has for you and you combine all that together I think that it, it'll all flow together once once you can get that get that under um, figure that out I love that Jaquela beautiful first things first first things first establish the foundation and you can soar from there absolutely thank you Jaquela I'd say uh, two things is build a plan and build a product and what I mean by that is when you talk about building a plan, it's, it's kind of, you know, sometimes it's difficult to take the first step without knowing what the first step is. Uh, so whether that be applying to an institution or meeting a counselor for something and figure out what your options are or talking to a, a mentor in an industry that you may want to go into and really trying to figure out what that may look like, uh, you have to build a plan. And I think, uh, you know, I, I initially started out in the civil engineering route and I was always a business management guy, you know, uh, and I went civil engineering and I was like, boy, I don't want to be calculating stuff. And uh, even if you don't see my face, I'm a South Asian. So everyone thinks I'm an engineer and I love to calculate stuff. No, I hate calculating stuff. Like, that's not what I want to do with my life. Uh, I love working with people. I love working with um, on the business management side of things. And then I found construction management, you know. Um, and I wouldn't have found that had I not taken the first step of actually going into school, starting down the civil engineering path, really trying to kind of dig down into what these classes and programs look like and so on. So that's building a plan. Uh, and when I say building a product, um, I always talking about the return on investment. For me, I was always looking at, okay, what am I packaging to sell a potential employer? Uh, you know, it's not, um, okay, it's a resume, but what am I selling them? What is my unique selling proposition? So even from my thesis to everything, everything in my mind was like, okay, I'm building a product. What does this look like? What am I, what am I focused on? So, um, so I think those two things really did help. And I would, I, I would share that with anyone who's, who's considering a collegiate journey, build a plan, build a product. I love that, Dylan. And one thing I want to pull out of that build a plan, build a product is you also gave us permission to pivot. So a change of major or a change of direction, even after you take that first step, you're learning as you go. So it may not be the plan that you make from the outset. The plan changes. I tell students all the time, the plan can change, but the destination didn't. So the way that you get there may change, but you will still get to the goal. Um, so you don't have to know it all from the beginning. You just got to take a step and get into that. And then you learn and navigate it as you go. It, it, that kind of goes along with, with what I was going to say um, to anyone thinking about taking that first step. Remember that it, it's just that it's a first step. Um, it's important to have that purpose and that end goal in mind. But at the same time, you don't have to have the whole plan figured out. You just got to take the step and um, you have to make your educational journey your educational journey. It doesn't have to match anyone else's. It doesn't have to be what someone else tells you it has to be. Um, if you take that step, then it prepares you to take the next step and the next step. Uh, and that can, that can, I, I'm about to be on right there with you, Dr. Jackson. It can look like a, a seven year doctorate degree. Um, it, it can look so different than what you may have expected or what you've seen in other people's lives, but it's your educational journey. Uh, and the important thing is that you're taking that first step and then the step and then the step again. So um, I would say just that, think of it as taking that step. 
uh, and don't be afraid to take where those steps um, kind of lead you in your own journey. I love it. Thank you, Caleb, to take that step. And you know what? I don't even regret that seven year journey. I learned so much about who I am and what I can do through muscling through that. I mean, I always tell myself I finished, but it was an ugly finish, honey. It was not a photo finish, but I finished. So I w- looking back on it now, I wouldn't change a thing. Not only did I get a degree, but I learned so much about PBJ. Um, I feel like the only thing I would really add to all of that great advice is if you're like thinking about getting started, um, I love like a good pro con list of reasons why and um you know, maybe if you do need to think about like what else, what else is out there, like really being able to see um, what all of my options were um, was helpful for me to get started. Um, and then like once I had all of that down, really just praying um, over those options um, and taking it to um my close circle and asking them to pray with me um and so you know like being able to touch and agree and manifest what it was that um was in store for me um was uh, really kind of how I would suggest getting going I love that Lindsay and I think that's the perfect place for us to go as we end this um I, I always say that you don't search for purpose you seek the purpose giver and purpose will flow Um, And that is through prayer and that is through seeking him and talking to him. And you know, what's beautiful. God knows how to speak to us. He knows how to direct us. He created you. So he's not in heaven wringing his hands, wondering how he's going to get a message to you. He knows exactly. He knows exactly how to steer you, how to direct you, how to make sure that you're in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. Your job is to just obey, trust him and obey. So as we close this today, I am so grateful for all of my friends who say yes to join for this conversation and who was willing to share their journeys with all of you. Um, I'm so grateful that you all have watched or listened um, to what we have to share tonight, but I got to encourage you, friend, it's time. It is time to take the step, all of the excuses, all of the fear, all of the things that have been holding you back, it is literally time to stash that all away, step over it and get it done. And we are examples that you can do it. You can do it. You already have everything you need to get this done. Your job is to tap into that through prayer and ask God to be God in your life. Let him be God. Let him show you what he can do through you. Because that's the miracle he's trying to do. So let him do it. Let him do it. Y'all, thanks for listening to us. As always, I want you to remember that you are powerful. You are significant. And you are loved. Love always. PBJ.